Hello again. Okay, I've been asked by a number of people now to um, explain about uh, crown wheels and pinions, ratios, gearing, tooth count, and uh, the differences between them and how they all work. So what I've got here on the table are four uh, crown wheel and pinions. Um, here we've got a standard uh, Land Rover 3.54. These are all long nose crown wheel and pinions. I may do a video on short nose uh, versions later. So we've got standard 3.54. Then here we've got a modern Ashcroft 3.75. We've got a cam differentials 4.75. And I've got an old style Ashcroft 4.1. First thing to bear in mind that on a vast majority of all Land Rovers, um, excluding series vehicles, so you're looking at Defenders, 90s, 110s, 200, 300 TD5s, they all have a standard ratio of 3.54, which is this baby. Now the standard 3.54 crown wheel and pinion is by its nature quite a weak unit. These, uh, the number of teeth on here is quite vast, and similarly when you look at the crown wheel there's an awful lot of teeth on there and the standard uh, the standard count is 46 teeth on the crown wheel and 13 teeth on the pinion so if you ever want to know what the ratio is if you divide 46 by 13 you get 3.54 or as close as damn it so that's your standard differential now Cam and Ashcroft are probably the two biggest gear manufacturing companies in the UK, they're both well known. Let's just run through what they do. Standard ratio is 3.54, which is that. Ashcroft also do a 3.5. They also do a 3.75, a 4.12, a 4.37 and a 4.75. Cam do a 3.8, a 4.1 and a 4.75. I'll just hold that up so you can see the differences. So as you can see Ashcroft are the only manufacturer to our knowledge that actually do a standard heavy duty 3.5 crown wheel and yes you could put a 3.5 in one end and a 3.54 in the other you would not notice the difference. Similarly you could mix a cam 4.2 and a Ashcroft 4.12. So if we look at these two gears here, if we look at the, the standard 3.54 and the Ashcroft 3.5, what is the difference? Well the difference is actually more than you would believe, and I haven't actually got a standard 3.5 Ashcroft Heavy Duty to show you. But the standard one has 13 teeth on the pinion and 46 on the crown wheel. With the Ashcroft, so that's standard, and with the Ashcroft Heavy Duty, what they have done is they've reduced the number of teeth on the crown wheel to 28 and they've reduced the number of teeth to 8. Now what this means in simple terms is less teeth, each tooth can be bigger for the same circumference. So in simple terms I'm going to mix around a bit here. This is an Ashcroft 3.75 and if you look at the teeth on that it is absolutely massive. The depth of those teeth, I hope you can see there, are significantly bigger than the teeth on a standard crown wheel. And more teeth means you've got a stronger differential. Because that comes back to the pinion as well. On a standard pinion, you've got an awful lot of teeth. And each of those teeth is shorter in the depth it is to the base core. And on the Ashcroft one, each of these massive teeth is going to take a lot more to tear off the plate than it would on a standard diff. And that's why the standard crown wheels and pinions break so easily. So what you've then got to work out is what ratio you need to gain what you want out of your transmission. Now the strange thing is you can change your transfer box. If you change your transfer box ratios, then what that does is actually change only the high ratio. All the low boxes are the same ratio. So when you go off-road, if you've got say a 3.54 crown wheel and you really need a 4.75 crown wheel, changing the transfer box will make a great difference on the road and absolutely no difference off the road. So the way to change the gearing properly on a Land Rover is to change the differentials. And to do that you need to change the front and the rear. 
Now what I said earlier was that both Cam and Ashcroft make gears. Now what I've got here is a selection of gears but I'll talk you through the main differences between an Ashcroft gear and a Cam gear. We've looked at an Ashcroft 3.75 as you can see it's absolutely enormous. You can still break these because the way that these have been made is an 838 tooth count. The depth of these teeth is absolutely huge. The, li the most likely thing to happen if you overload this diff is either some bits will get in there and blow it apart or you could potentially flex the back plate here because the teeth are so big the back plate isn't much bigger than standard um, but massively stronger. The materials this is made of is also hugely uh, improved over standard and the heat treatment and probably some other things that we don't know about that Ashcroft's do to them. But in simple terms the the depth of that is the difference between that and a cam gear. This cam have gone at a very different different position. What they've done is made a huge base plate and put similar numbers of teeth on top but as you can see the teeth aren't as deep and the ratio of teeth on a Ashcroft 4.75 and a Cam 4.75 are exactly the same. They both have a tooth count of 8 and 38 but the teeth are deeper on the Ashcroft. Now if you peg either of these crown wheels you're probably coming up against the strongest crown wheel combination you can, you can do. It's really ho horses for courses as to which you prefer, Ashcrofts or Cams. Um, I think if you peg it you'll probably find the Ashcroft is going to be a stronger unit because the pegging if you like increases the depth of the base plate. You've got these enormous teeth, um, the quality of the gears is superb as are cams. With cams you've got an enormous back plate which resists the flexing and you've got enormous teeth compared with standard although ratio for ratio not as deep, they're the same number but not as deep as an Ashcroft one. So pegging a cam one again is going to make it hugely strong. What I'll do later is a second video that talks about the difference between the different ratios and the different gearings. What you also see is there are different ways that the pinions can also be fixed. This is an Ashcroft 3.8 and it has a bolt going down the centre. This is a Cam 4.75 and it has a bolt, a nut and if you want to have overkill a, a, a locking pin as well. There is really no advantage to them but what you've got to be careful is if you ever go buying diffs um, and you're going to try and rebuild it there are all sorts of peculiar little combinations that vary from one pinion to another um, all of which will need shimming both for pinion height and pinion preload. They use the same shims although there's a variety of thicknesses and I might do a video on that as well later. But in simple terms that's the difference between a standard gear and a heavy duty gear. It's all down to the number of teeth and the tooth count but when you fit one of those versus one of those and you peg it my goodness me you're going up in strength. Nothing is unbreakable. <clears throat> I also ask, get asked the questions which is better Cam or Ashcroft? I'm not really sure <laughs> and to that end I've actually got one in each end of my truck I think um, neither of which are blown up because they're both pegged. <clears throat> but in the end of the day if you fit any of these heavy duty crown wheels you've got to make sure you get the right ratio or what you'll do is you'll swap the strength for another problem which is your gearing is wrong. If you over gear the vehicle then you'll find that theoretically you'll have a top speed of about 200 miles an hour but in actual fact fifth gear becomes useless 35 Simex is on a standard 90 you're driving down the motorway and it will slowly just slow down whereas if you under gear it your 0 to 60 will impress people except you won't get to 60 you'll get to about 40 miles an hour the engine will be screaming and you are flat out so it's really important that you get the gearing right and in the next video we do we'll actually show you what effect the gearing has with various ratios on various crown wheels and pinions transfer boxes and tires and how you go about choosing the right ratio for your truck so that you don't buy two crown wheels and get it wrong. Hope this has been of interest. Look at our next video. Thanks very much.